think you can create the most coveted colorway? Now is your chance to prove your style in the NBA 2K20 Shoe Creator Challenge. Take a shot at designing a sick pair of kicks for a chance at 250,000 VC and seeing your shoe in NBA 2K20. Four categories, four winners. But only one design will come to life in game. And it's up to the 2K community to decide. Do you have what it takes? Submit your design today. Welcome to the NBA 2K20 Shoe Game. It's on. This week on NBA... Coming up next... The Timberwolves taking on the Knicks. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, losing seven out of their last ten games has left a bad taste in their mouth. But tonight, represent... Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on 2K Sports. NBA action is coming up. Kevin Harlan here with Greg Anthony and a pair of... We get a break in the action, so let's take a look at the West and how the teams are stacking up. You look at the Timberwolves. It hasn't been a great season for them. We may see some changes in the offseason. And I think for the Timberwolves, one thing they don't have to worry about is not having enough free time this summer because they're not going anywhere near the postseason. And there will be players on the move once this season is over. You can count on that. They have to make wholesale changes, and the front office knows it. So the New York starting five... We've got Mo Harkless. Taj Gibson is out there with Julius Randle. Then it's Barrett, and it's Peyton in at the point guard position. And for the Timberwolves, we've got Beasley. He's out there with Russell, and it's a Kogi in at the three. And you look at how Towns is so effective on offense, and it's because he really has the entire package for a big man. Back to the basket, facing up, playing outside or in, off the bounce or on the catch. This guy can do it all. Peyton passes to Randall. It's tipped, and it's out of bounds to New York. They'll retain possession. Shot clock at six. Now here's Harkless. Not a lot of room. That will not get it done. He's 0 for 2. Here's Minnesota. Over to the left wing. Here's Towns. And it's off from three-point range. And Greg, as you said, it's the skill level of Towns at his young age that is so incredible. Very capable three-ball shooter, but he likes backing you down on the block as well. You step back and look at what he can do for a team, and there aren't really any holes in his game. Running Gomez kicks to Beasley. The Timberwolves working the ball around now. 14 feet away. And Russell gets it to go. Well, the more experience you get in understanding how to run pick and roll, the better you become. D'Angelo Russell improving his decision making. Here's Peyton. Oh, and he plucks it off the glass. Wow. Beasley with a clean look and some very quick points for him on that possession. Well, the versatility he possesses makes him a very tough cover, guys some tough offensive sets they want to turn it around yeah right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum Peyton kicks to Gibson and it's Gibson finishing it off well what you want to see from Alfred Peyton are floor general skills on full display finds the open teammate nice on the pass to Towns back to Russell and it's out of bounds. And they say it was last touch by Towns. Leading the season doors, and some teams now are not going to be in the postseason. They're out of the playoffs and are giving more time. You talked about this earlier, giving more time to their young players to develop. Well, there is nothing more beneficial to a young player than real-time NBA experience. So when you're out of the playoffs, those young guys start to get more and more minutes. They'll give those young guys more and more responsibility on the offensive and defensive end. And there's no greater teacher than giving 
NBA reps to guys who you think can be a key part of your future. It's so fun for us as the fans and people that cover the league to get a glimpse of the future. What these teams want these individual players to be like. Beasley dishes to Towns, and Towns throws it down. <laughs> Look out below, an air mail special by Cat. Peyton the bounce pass. Pass to Harkins. Back to Gibson. Passes it to Harkins. The three. Rebound, Minnesota. Tough loss coming against the Rockets in the last game they played. Well, when you're facing a team that's feeding off the crowd's energy, you have to bring your A game in. They didn't do that defensively. One thing you know, Greg, is you've got to pack your defense in the suitcase if you're going to win on the road, and they simply did not bring it. The D just kind of stepping aside and letting him get to the rim. There's a reason, GA, the lead is what it is right now. I tell you, you can't get stops if you're unwilling to put in the work. And so New York calls timeout. They're first. You know, one dilemma that jumps out at me with the Timberwolves, over the years, they have been an excellent offensive rebounding team. It's the other end, the defensive backboards, where they have had some problems. Welcome to a brand new episode of NBA 2K TV. Let's jump right in and play some 2K. A couple of weeks ago, we caught up with Warriors rookie Eric Paschal and I challenged him to a game of 2K. He is surprisingly good. Check it out. Welcome to 2K TV. Today I am playing Eric Pascal in a game to 2K. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Ready to play. I'm a Laker fan, so I always go with my Lakers, but I'll, I'll play whatever teams. If you want to do all-time classics, I'm down for anything. Oh, you can do all-time. Yeah, let's do some all-time teams. I think I want to go with all-time 2000 All-Stars. I'm making all-time 90s. All right, I love it. Welcome everyone, this is the WNBA on 2K Sports. Our game tonight featuring the Connecticut Sun as they go up against the Atlanta Dream. Along with Tim Swartz and Brian Benefitemi, I'm Blake Suniga and we're happy to have you along for another great game. There's lots of WNBA players who excel at attacking the basket, but guys, who is the best finisher in the league? I gotta go with Tina Charles. It has to be her, right? She has such a presence around the rim and goes up confident each and every time. Oh, I love watching Tina Charles finish inside, but another name comes to mind for me, and it's Asia Wilson. Her combination of creativity and athleticism helps her challenge opponents at the rim and, and finish strong. Now here's Montgomery. Pass to Williams. Now McCautry. Six to shoot. Freeland with the ball. She's covered by Thomas. Here's Hayes. She drains it in as the shot clock ticks down. 
with a strong understanding of which shot to use in which scenario, a strong offensive presence is only a part of Hayes' game. Now here's Jones. Right side, Williams. To the wing, right side. Thomas, good. She draws so much attention. Williams can find others for easy buckets. Good dish. Thomas with the steal. And here they come. Up the floor. And again, it's Connecticut. Three straight makes the start. Looking good so far. Now here's Montgomery. Just about two minutes into the game, first quarter of basketball. Pass to Hayes. Six on the shot clock. McCautry. Shoots over Thomas. And it's McCautry missing. Up top, Jones. He's guarded by Hayes. Thomas outside. Strickland up top. That falls. Nice feed that time from Jasmine Thomas. Four makes on four shots. Everything has fallen for them early. Montgomery outside. Pass to Breland. Hayes. Can they get it? It's rebounded by Alyssa Thomas. Another miss. One for four here early. And you look at the Sun, you know, they're a team with very good efficiency on offense. They, they have smart shot selection from pretty much everyone in the rotation. And that kind of gives them one of the most dynamic offenses in the league. Now here is McCautry. Freeland outside. Montgomery outside. For three. Doesn't go that time. Good work defensively by Jasmine Thomas. And for the Sun, you add up everything they have, and it equals a scary offense. And this team can just run you off the floor when their shots are falling. Very unselfish amongst each time other. Out, out. It's hard to game plan against. As a group, they can get scores against any defense in this league. And the dream call time here. Oh, they're pretty disappointed, this coaching staff, and rightfully so. Just they're, they're giving up a big run night now. Got to figure out a way to stop it. Yeah, they haven't really looked good at all here lately. Something's got to change for them. Let's see what the coaching staff has up their sleeve. And we're just over three and a half minutes into the first. And here's Bentley. Trying to get back on track. It's rebounded by Thomas. Such tough defense there against one of the better finishers in the game. Outside Clarendon. Pass to Bantam. To the middle. Here's Jones, and she drops in the layup off glass. Every time they get scored on during this run, it seems like it's come from inside the paint. Buckle up on defense. Yeah, it's time to collapse down and make them shoot jumpers. Here's Billings. The jump shot from the baseline is right on target. And here's the sun. Thomas outside Clarendon pass to 
Jones. Thomas. From downtown. Bentley with the rebound. Well, guys, I think one of my favorite things about Alex Bentley is her incredible shooting touch with good form and a... And it's going to be the two. Welcome everyone to Noche. Hey, and a beyond. DA, it's all yours. Well, great right, DA, thanks. Now the starting group for Orlando. At the four and the five, we have Gordon and Bucevic. Volz is out there with Evan Fournier, and it's Isaac in at the three spot. And for the Magic. At the four and the five, we have Gordon and Bucevic. Fournier out there with Markel Volz, and it's Isaac in at the small forward position. Now here's Fournier, and he gets it to go. Mark up front. That's where the game will likely be won or lost in this one. Great, great talent, no doubt, on the front lines here. But if for some reason they cancel each other out, then you know where it's going to be decided, in the backcourt, with guys about your size, Kevin. <laughs> Wait a minute. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Well, this early, they should be showing a lot more energy on defense. It's not there. Now, here's Fournier. Scoring-wise, he's definitely making his mark. Right now, he's averaging about 19 points a game. Six on the shot clock. The Magic need to get a shot off here. Three-pointer on the way. Rebounded by Vucevic. Here's Vucevic. He'll bring it up for Orlando. And this game, the first chance they've had to see Orlando. Offensive rebound. Out of bounds as Orlando keeps possession. On defense, the Magic. Fultz looking around. Five to shoot. And there's the pass to Gordon. Hits it from three-point range. Man, I like seeing Gordon stretch his range a little bit. I mean, the three-point shot is still a work in progress for him, but I think he's only going to get better the more experience he gets shooting it from there. Now, here's Fournier. Pass to Fultz. From 13, here's Vucevic 
and slam dunk by Vucevic. Yeah, you know, one of the best parts of Nikola Vucevic's game is his great body, excellent hands, and the high motor makes him an outstanding rebounder. Here's Gordon. He's certainly been a consistent piece of their offense, averaging about 14 and a half points a game. And really just unselfish basketball on the interior. That's the kind of pass a coach loves to see. Now here's Fournier. Now Isaac. He was definitely a factor in their offense, averaging 12 points a game. Fournier passes to Vucevic. Let's it go with a three. No good. And Orlando will come the other way. Outplayed in the previous game on their schedule, losing to Chicago. And you look out there at the Magic, one of the taller teams in our league. And, you know, that's a philosophical bench for the front office. They want long, athletic players, draft guys with great length, and then develop their strength and skill level. And I actually kind of like that approach. Have a philosophy, stick to it, and be true to it. Here's Fultz following the basket by Evan Fournier. Fultz dishes to Vucevic. Isaac up the live Orlando. And Vucevic kicks to Fultz. Fournier passes to Fultz. Puts up a three. A fresh 14 for Orlando. Outside Fournier. Back to Fultz. Shoots over Isaac. And it's off the back rim. No good. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the quarter. Poked loose. And it's sent back by Isaac. And the suffocating reach of Isaac is tough to overcome. And out shoot excels at getting up and denying shots. So Orlando going with an almost entirely new group here. Bamba is checked in for Gordon. Ennis comes in for Isaac. Terrence Ross is checked in for Fournier. And DJ Augustine subbed in for Markel Fultz. So Orlando going with an almost entirely new group here. Bamba is checked in for Vucevic. James Ennis comes in for Jonathan Isaac. Terrence Ross is checked in for Evan Fournier. And DJ Augustine subbed in for Fultz. No good from Ross. Boy, he knows he should have knocked that one down, especially with the defense not giving much of an effort. Pass to Bamba. He dishes it to Augustine. Trying to end the drought. And the layup is good. Well, I tell you what, for Augustine being as small as he is, he's crafty and he's stronger than he looks, which allows him to finish through tough defense. Now here is Augustine. He's coming off a 16-point game against Chicago. Passes it to Ross. He's on target from eight feet out. You've got to make Ross a passer in that pick and roll. I mean, he's a better scorer than he is a playmaker. And the 6'7 swingman. Terrence Ross, the number eight pick out of Washington. Well, you know, the shooting and leaping ability of Ross, phenomenal. I mean, I think the defensive end is where he can solidify his game and really improve. Uh, he's got all the tools, though, to be an excellent two-way player. Now here is Augustine. He's coming off a 16-point game against Chicago. Gordon with the defensive effort. Well, you know, stopping him is never easy to do, but the defense was strong there. With the putback, controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. Bamba's got crazy length and impressive height, obviously, at north of seven feet. Helps him on that offensive board, but his tenacity, a big part of that, too. Now here is Augustine. He's a good contributor to his team, averaging about 10 and a half points a game. Three. And the officials call him for a three-second violation. Carter Williams, he's checked in for Augustine. And a switcher also for Orlando. Michael Carter-Williams checked in for Augustine. Magic leading by seven. Carter-Williams feeling it out a bit. Now the pass to Gordon. 
And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. Tell you what, that remarkable foot speed of Gordon's really causes problem for the defense. He's a hard guy to keep in front of. This is his first chance at the line tonight. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First free throw is good. And, you know, I like that Gordon is a versatile guy who can play both forward spots. He's a terrific athlete who continues to improve. And both free throws good for Gordon. Seven seconds left here in the opening quarter. Here's Carter Williams. And that shot was up in time, but doesn't go in. And so it's the Orlando Magic in control with a nine-point lead to end the quarter. They're shooting the ball so well in this one. A great performance from the field. We've got more NBA basketball coming your way in just a minute. James Ennis played in Australia. The drive by James. And oh my gosh! That's crazy! Welcome you to Nache, and as things get ready to roll, let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's on the sideline. David? Well, guys. Yeah, and he has their confidence. David, thank you. We get a break in the action, so let's take a look at the West and how the teams are stacking up. You take a look at Los Angeles. They are the favorite right now to lock up the number one seed come playoff time. Sitting in first place right now and not looking like they you know, are going to be slowing down at all. You know, for Los Angeles, they must have reached every goal they set for themselves this season. For them to be this high in the standings this late in the season, what an accomplishment. It really has been amazing. Everyone just kept waiting for them to fade, and it never happened. And now the opening lineup for Detroit. On the wings, Kennard and Snell. Wood out there with Griffin. And it's Rose in at the guard position. And for the Lakers, Green and LeBron at the two and the three. Anthony Davis is out there with JaVale McGee. And it's Bradley in at the point guard. And Smitty, Blake Griffin stepping up his game in every way since joining the Detroit Pistons. Kevin, last season was a career year in scoring. And he's doing so much on the floor. Rebounding and passing are a big part of his game now. And he's leading the way for this team in a lot of ways. And so the Los Angeles Lakers get the first points of the ball game. Here's Kennard. He's been a factor in their offense on most nights with his scoring average at nearly 16 points a game. Pass to LeBron. It's intercepted. Snell, the pass to Kennard. Back to Snell. 
Griffin dishes to Rose. And for the ball out of bounds, Davis touched it last. <laughs> Just around a minute and a half into the first quarter. Just five on the clock. Rose gets a wide open look. Oh my God, they can't buy one. 0 for 4. Sometimes this happens. James, no good. Woo, the defense gets away with a late rotation. That's a shot he normally makes. Snell kicks to Rose. And we're going to have a jump ball. It's tied up there. And the Lakers with possession here. Lakers have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Bradley passes to McGee. Pass to LeBron. And the bright lights of L.A., perhaps too much for some players. But you know what, Greg? <laughs> Not for LeBron James. This guy thrives in the spotlight. The Lakers crafting a roster to satisfy his championship ambitions. Off the court, the City of Angels perfect for maximizing his business aspirations. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. Free throw good, James. Well, Smitty, we're coming down the stretch here. Talk about the mental toughness needed to finish a season strong. You know, I think you got to have that. Everybody talk about the game physically, guys making shots. And we all know there are some teams and players, they all do that well. But who's the tough team that can get through the tough times? That's when you see the teams that can get over the hump and you start to say, I like that team. Still playing at an MVP level. LeBron James, the greatest player of his generation, and, and some would argue, of all time. We can't take for granted what we've been able to witness. Now, here's Brad following the miss by Derrick Rose. And James throws it down. Not much anyone can do to stop that. LeBron flexing at the rack. Rose surveying the D down low and Griffin scores the assist by Rose and now in his mid 30s LeBron showing no sign of slowing down and his dedication to training and, and really maintaining his body second to none uh, alongside his prodigious athleticism it seems that's made a huge difference Pistons trail by six Outside Rose, pass to Griffin. It's stolen by Davis. To the inside. Lays it up and in on the nice reverse. Every time they get scored on during this run, it's come from inside the paint. There's the pass to Griffin. From deep three-point range, a rebound by the Lakers. Last time these two teams came together was also in this building. They were able to win it for the home fans. And really brought an impressive physicality to that matchup, drawing a ton of fouls and, of course, went on to win it. They forced the issue and made the defense hack them to death last game. I'm sure they'll try to mirror that same attack in this one. And now the first time out called here for Detroit. I love the continued development for Anthony Davis. The three-pointer, his ball handling. Last season, a career high in assists. 